um, what interests me most is how you made to kind of diagnosis of the system, what's the difference between the desires and the present, how do you choose them the needs on the basis of that, are they all the thing categories or quality dimensions? As I said in one of the, the criteria of the memes are that they are generic, they can be applied to a lot of different content. But as experience, when we have experience, you start to see, well, this meme fits better with that content or that theme specifically. So it's a kind of... Uh, can you give an example? An example. Let's see that uh, it's about leadership. The leaders here in this system, the formal leaders don't lead. The informal leaders, they lead. Okay, we have a lot of informal leaders, but no, not the ones with the... Uh, with the roles, they don't have authority, for instance. That could be something. And then I would choose a meme called lead and follow, uh, which is one very, very simple meme. When do you follow and when do you lead? Which is a very open question. Um, and I will do another meme. Let's take a look up at the, what's up here. I will take a look at reinforcement and corrections. This is kinetics, isn't it? I mean, when do you... When do you reinforce and lead? And who are reinforcing lead leaders in your system? And who are uh, corrective leaders in your system? Who do corrections all the time? Who come up with and say, don't do this, don't do that, which is a role. And who are the guys who are saying, yeah, come on, this is more of that. Let's go, more of, what, uh, of this thing. If you combine just these two simple feedback mechanisms with leading and following, which is not here, but uh, which was... Uh, which is not a meme, and you can start to say well, what is the least thing you can do to get the most impact. And when you combine these three, three memes, we are talking and doing activities around leadership in that specific system with this specific content. Did I answer your question? Uh, to some degree. <coughs> but so it's, it's mostly intuitive. Uh, if you diagnose a problem, you kind of have an intuition of which of those memes would be helpful in that context. Yeah, and you also have activities <coughs> related to each meme again, according to this rectangle I showed you. So there are activities as well. So a lot of the memes have certain activities in connection to them. So it's, it's a kind of balance. When you do a planning of a program with different themes, it's, yes, intuitive, partly, and based on previous experiences in other social systems. Yes, this, yeah. I was wondering, you create the sentences that come up from your analysis, but I'm pretty sure for the same sentence, the one on the lower uh, left-hand side mm -hmm. will have a completely different view from the other one. So. Basically, you should be always on the middle if you do the average. That's a very good uh, point. What we do is we, we classify and say this is a way to classify. And we call your, do a comparison with this group to this group. This is unit 1 and unit B. And then we do a comparative analysis and say what's the differences between... So when you are giving your input on the questionnaire, you always say where do you come from? And we can also do like this. Yeah. and say, uh, which is very, very interesting, because then it's really diagnosing the whole organization. The guys here don't understand that thing. Flows, yeah. That's right, and the guys up here, they really understand it, because they are talking to each other all the time. This is very interesting stuff that comes out of what, when, we do this, when we do this stuff. So, once you detect that, what do you do? You go to the upper level and say, look, yeah. That's what you have what in we your do, organization, that's a problem. What we do here is, before we send out this out to 1,000 people, after talking to 15, we often go to this woman up here and say, how do you regard these statements? Are they too heavy to ask or to do a check on in your social system right now? Because you're maybe merging tomorrow and you have a big solution or something like that coming up tomorrow. or but very often we get that, yes, let's do this. This is reality. This is much better than the crap we get from Chicago every year, which is, if you understand what I mean, where they have done this and you are just turning around and sending out the same HR stuff uh, from, uh, from last year and people are just not answering because it's not relevant to them. There are, these are statements coming from a different context very often. 
But when we come up with these statements, they are so controversial very often that they are really opening up the box, opening up the social system because people really start to answer because it's relevant, it's to the point, and it's in their language. But of course there are differences, and then we start to look at different parts of the system. Yes? And it was interesting to have your answer on your statement in your paper here. Yeah. Have you designed for emergence, right? Yeah. And uh, I was not interested by your opening statement. Yeah. Why, is, why is theory and practicality, what is such complexity, and why is theory actually not an answer to complexity? Mm -hmm. For me, you have turned around it here. Mm -hmm. You have put theory complex and the practical, practical world is so simple. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, that's, that's my reaction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This, I said, what do I do with this? I mean, coming from the practical world, I said, why do I need all this theory? Ah, good question. And you say, oh, theory is so simple, I call next complex. Mm -hmm. No, reality is extremely simple. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of, um, if I used a reductionist approach to this and started to really decompose the system, uh, in a way to find one causal, uh, one causal, uh, one cause for a lot of different effects. Doing doing the analysis, which I respect a lot, and uh, and I am trained in that as well as a social scientist. A lot of the consultants out there are doing that in that tradition, and they very often come in with a normative perspective because they are they are experts on taking up the oil or or bringing down the, whatever. They are content experts very often. And they come with normative statements, which is based on scientific, traditional science, which is important. Not social science. And they are, no, 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 not necessarily, but in, in engineering and whatever. And they come in with their expertise, do come in with their exclamation marks, and tell people what to do. And a lot of consultants are in that field doing that. What, what we are doing it's really just to, based on the agent perspective, based on the complexity we know is there, we just ask the system itself. And that is a simple method. But the backdrop for that simple met method is to have an academic orientation that is more into evolutionary perspectives, more into complexity perspectives, and more into cognition perspectives. So it's a backdrop, but in the forefront, it's very simple. But the backdrop is, for me, it's very important because I need to stand somewhere in a theoretical position. If not, I will come up with practical stuff that is maybe breaking. Because the reason why it's working so well in practice is because it has a theoretical foundation. But that's my statement. But that brings us to the statement. Our foundation. Yeah, yeah. But if, you, if, you're start, if you're starting to be eclectic and just trip there and the new, new thing and you pick up the, the, the book at the airport, say, oh, that's a new thing. And you go to another airport and you pick up another book, oh, that's a new thing. And you're not having a position, theoretically or philosophically. I think that your practice will be weaker than if you're oriented and having an academic position. Well, but that's my nice. I think what's the meaning of practice in that context? Pardon? Your practice is weak. What do you mean by practice in that context? Uh, practicing what context? When? I mean, there is a book. How yes. to? Yeah. Book, how to? Yes. No found. No theoretical foundation. Yeah. You will pick one with you to it. Don't know where you are. Yeah. Kind of. So, well, what's the word practice? My question is, what do you mean by practice in that? Context? Ah, I understand. Well, I think that to be consistent and to re to to replicate and to develop what we are doing is we are developing a company. Uh, we're growing and we are having a foundation which is academic, and we think that if you are eclectic, which is picking how to hear and how to dare, then the practice will be weaker. And uh, that's my opinion, based on my experience. Okay, okay. Then, then I have another question. Yes, please. This used to be my area of interest. Uh, yes. Consultancy, so yes. that's a long time now. Uh, strategy, goals, and structure is one of the same, right? Mm. That's one of the same. Mm. You either lead or follow mm. within goals and your structure. Now, how do you convert from lead to follow? Mm which is innovation creativity, mm. which then, that's the bono, right? Mm -hmm. You go outside of it. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you do that with mm -hmm. this scheme here? Well, in our workshops, just... I mean, just by, by this, I mean, how do you switch then from how, to follow? Right? Yeah, well, that is a quite abstract question, because it, I, try, I will try to contextualize that. If you are a big company, and you are a follower in the market, for instance, and you are, that's an identity thing. And, you, and you, you don't want to be a following market. You want to be a leader in the market, a market leader, which is also an identity thing. 
to make this system, well, this is maybe her. She's saying, we want to be market leaders. Today we are following. She says that. And then the other says, who cares? I'm sorting out some stuff from the, in the office here. I don't care. So really, to make that, that message go, come true in this social system, so it really influenced the whole system identity-wise to be a leader instead of a follower, then you have to coordinate all the ants in the system, in the ant hill, if you understand what I mean. It's, it's like everyone has to carry that perspective on an identity level. Yeah, to start to work together with that identity and do actions that are different than if you were a market follower. That is on the broad perspective. Inside this unit here, these three persons are always following these three persons, and they should be opposite to get innovation happening. Let's say that, if you understand what I mean. So these guys here have followed, in every meaning of the word, these guys over here. Actually, it should be opposite. Then it would create. Then we have to work with these three and these three and say, hey, when do you read and when do you follow? What, what, what if you, on an individual level, started to switch strategy and started to follow these guys? And what does that mean in practice? Just to make that happen, that is a facilitation task. And then you are doing leading following uh, changes within the system uh, on a lower level. Is that a hierarchical relationship between the global and the local? Might be. Uh, we treat social systems as hierarchies because there are always, almost always, a hierarchical dimension involved. Also in Wikipedia, there are some hierarchies there as well. And we treat them as networks because this is definitely networks. These are informal networks. This is an organism. And instead of, in addition to being a mechanistic hierarchy, and we sometimes treat them as markets because there are transactions, there are buying and selling going on inside the system as well. This is just perspectives on what these people are doing. When I talked like this about this group and this group, there's definitely a hierarchy dimension involved. But sometimes it might be not hierarchy at all. So this is just the group over here that's need to communicate more with the guys in Rio because they are really doing something in the engineering field. So we just open up because the hierarchy is preventing free flow of information uh, across these silos. So just to start to open up, that needs facilitation. And then say, let's don't look at this as a hierarchy now. Let's work more on a network with a network frame. And that's what the global brain will change something. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that is a view of all this, right? Yeah. But, but, but by this, if you have a total view of it, mm -hmm. you don't have this miscommunication. That's true. So hierarchies are falling. I had a speech on TED, TEDx uh, two or three years ago when I was talking about how we have a governance sclerosis both in public and private sector because of the hierarchies. Hierarchies are very good to certain stuff, but they are also killing uh, services and production of goods in the Western world uh, in many ways because we don't have enough network thinking among the practitioners. They are still quite hierarchically oriented. But hierarchies are important, but they are not always important. I think hierarchies kill a lot of stuff. It depends. It depends. <laughs> yes? I have two questions. A little bit related. First one, you said that you just uh, said before that you explained the success by having a theoretical foundation. How would you answer the same question from an empirical standpoint? So, why does it work? Where it works and why doesn't it work or it doesn't? Mm. I'm, I'm doing that. I, I've, I've interviewed some police women, I work with the police. Uh, and they in a leadership training within this frame. And they started to talk about the selection. Why did they select this model? Why do they remember a model made to sit four years after and apply it when they think about complex tasks at hand? So I have an interview where people are replying on, do you remember this? Yes, no. If yes, do you apply this? Yes, no. If yes, does the application of this mean or means create the desired effects you want in your daily life? Yes, no. 
So I'm doing an empirical analysis on some of the social systems we have been working with. When it comes to the success of the company, I think that we have been working a few persons, it's a small global company, and now we're going to scale it, and the success is... Uh, uh, we have to see if we succeed. <laughs> is it the method or the people that you hire? I think it's a, it's a very good question. I think it's you have to, to be a facilitator and not a normative expert. Because this is a huge marketing value, but I'm not so sure that this is what works in practice when you come to a company and do the thing that you Oh, want. so you think I do the theoretical stuff for marketing purposes and do something else in the practical that's life? That's speculation. That's not just speculation. <laughs> well, uh, that's up to you to, to have that speculation, but I don't think... No, I'm, I'm not picking theories uh, just to have it for, for, mar for a marketing person. I really, when I'm working with this stuff, I'm really interested in understanding. And, and I, I, my ideal is to really try to take stuff out in practice. So when I do stuff, I always, as much as possible, try to refer to my, my theoretical backdrop and try to be consistent with my theoretical perspective. I think that's a yeah, pursuit yeah, where I want the, to the thing is that, that I, I, I would like to have some more in a, a higher resolution of how this works in practice. Mm -hmm. so, I will invite you to ask or you can do something here. We will do some jumps here in EFTA or in and in ESA, uh, at, uh, which is yeah European organizations, and you can come and watch and see, and uh, then you will see this because they, I totally agree with you. To talk about this stuff is important, and we do that. But at the same time, to really facilitate the group and to to do the certain uh, or to insert different models and so on, and to see this in practice is something different. But again, as with this gentleman over here, talking about the backdrop, the importance of having a backdrop so you can be consistent in what you do in practice. That's what, uh, that's what attracts me, and not being just a shopping around guy for a new new thing. Because that in, it will create inconsistency in making a system grow like this. So, I mean, I agree with Weaver's uh, question, that is that in this case, I think a lot depends on the people who implement it. Since you say that you don't have a strict criterion of which means to use in which circumstances, mm -hmm. you also don't seem to have a specific method to derive the questions or the statements on the basis of which you kind of diagnose the problem. That means that it depends on the intuition and the experience of the person who does it. If the person is good, it will work well. If the person is less good, it probably would not work as well. As for everything about it. Yeah, so but then <coughs> that makes it difficult to see what is the contribution of the theory, what is the contribution of the person. So when we onboard new people in this, to have a concept that is very clear and easy to communicate, and a method that is very clear and easy to communicate, and a method that is easy to apply, we, have, we are really focusing on that. So when we came back from um, Singapore now two, three weeks ago, we had a method for onboarding new people, and they are exposed to the practical reality in, immediately. So they will try out, and I, then I don't talk about pragmatism and complexity for sure. Never. I just I have some very simple models, some, some very simple methods, which is easy to approach, and you don't have to be a complexity theorist to, to work with this material. But as a backdrop for the concept, it's important to look at complexity and evolution and cognition and practice. But as a practitioner, you don't need to have, because then it's packaged in the concept. That's what we believe, and that's what we are going, how we're going to scale the business. I, I have a second question. I mean, for, it's a kind of following the first one, is that um, at the beginning of your talk, you spoke about uh, memes and the evolution of memes. Mm. So, in this setup of Kind of, uh, if the field, mm -hmm. I will call it the field, the company where you mm -hmm. do this job, how would you describe it was an evolutionary process having to do with memes applied to a context of a certain group organization problem? We have, um, I worked for a large marketing agency five years ago, and I met yes. one of the guys uh, in Oslo, a reception in Oslo, and he was approaching me and I think, and he started to talk about the meme. 
uh, immediately because one of, from uh, from the plan where he were really applying it and he was telling me how he was applying it and how he was combining it with arguments. Mm -hmm. What he does when he is sitting on the pub with his friend very often, if he has uh, an engagement and he's really like this and it is healthy, then he will take up um, the pen and the napkin and he will start to write it and tell it to his friend. And then we have a diffusion of the meaning. And that is, that is happening in closed systems or in organizations like this, okay. in closed systems. People are starting to talk, it's starting with the, with the influences, the rhetorics, because you become a carrier of very simple models. It's very easy to stand up on the blackboard or whiteboard and start to sketch it out. And if it's relevant, and if it hits, and if it fits with the content or the tasks at hand, and it really brings in something new, then you will have a diffusion, and then you will have an adaption among the different agents, and then you are in an evolutionary spin. So what you teach these people is how to pick up means that will be useful for them? That's not meant for me to decide, it's up to each individual to say if it's useful, I will adapt it and take it into account. Yeah. If it's not useful, I will just delete it and say this is not relevant for me. So that is the emergent part. What will stick and what will not stick is a question of relevancy and what kind of agent you have and what kind of context that agent is operating in. So that's the, diff the diffusion part. Yes. yes. The problem I have with since the general to be is that a company, a business company, is not a social system. Mm -hmm. it it's not a social system. Right. You have a goal to achieve, and you achieve your goal. Your social system is outside the goal. But you socialize outside your goal. But if you have a goal to obtain, and you have to make the best motor in the company, and you have to make the best this, you have to make the best that, whatever, you're focused on your goal, but there's no socializing. When I say social system, I'm not talking about socializing, I'm talking about uh, sociological expression, about uh, people together who feel that they belong together. If they have, are achieving goals, they are, in my terms, still a part of a social system. So it's just the name of an organization. So if you say, if you formalize a uh, social system, it will become closer to an organization. If that organization is goal-seeking and commercial, then you have a company, not we? So it's just, this is just terms, and I use the word social system because it opens up to a lot of uh, other systems than companies, because it's possible to work with this when there are several goals that are tried to be reached among the players as well. So every system is goal seeking, every system is commercial. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Can't explain that, right? No, so you, you mentioned socializing, and then I was... No, I was I what I meant was that to, to establish a social system where everybody understands, and etc., etc. It's nice to know, but that is not your job. Your job is to get your job done, right? That's what I mean. And that's a whole hierarchy of systems which have to fit perfectly and step into the march. But why you don't you achieve your goal? It's because they deviate all kinds of directions, and maybe they have too much free time to achieve their goal, that they start deviating and going all kinds of directions. Do what you have to do first, do it well, and the rest you do what you like. Right? Very often in, in the system, just to try to build on what you're saying, very often in the system there are strategies, there are PowerPoints, there are goals, they are communicated on the happenings and the gatherings and everything. This is business, we, we know that. So what we are doing is to just to, to come in and supply with additional means to make organizations achieve their goals. Okay. So we just come in with some, something extra because the formal systems are there, the reporting are there, the accounting are there, it's there, everything. And we come in with this in addition. So I agree with you. Okay. You have to agree with me. <laughs> uh, but what we were asked, I think, was not only the diffusion of the memes, but also the evolution in a sense all the kind of mutations that happen mm -hmm. so that when you come later, let's say two years later, mm -hmm. you recognize something that kind of resembles the meme you injected, but has actually become a different meme. Have mm -hmm. you found cases of that? These are abstractions. There are, there are, these are icons. When you work with an icon, and it's filled with content, specific content for a specific, from a specific field, then it starts to blend all together, doesn't it? But still, you can 
extract the model, and if they have put on an extra variable or an extra something extra, I haven't experienced that. Uh, mutations, no. Mutations in the sense that people are combining the different models as Legos, yes, but not uh, that you have individual changes of each icon. I haven't experienced that. But I haven't looked for it either, so it may be, it's maybe happening. But I think there are already a lot. I mean, it's, uh, how many do you have? Yeah, there were yeah. 45 or something. There is, it's 45 in the data plan. We have 123. So yeah, 123. Yeah. <laughs> That's a classification. Yes. That's just, and, and some of them are dead. They are not in use. They are not relevant anymore. They, they, they don't flourish. They don't spread. They don't mm -hmm. have it. So then they are just taken out. Exactly. And then new ones are coming in. I had some about form and content, which became too abstract. That's an example. Just the distinction between form and content. Then. Formal content is yeah. out. Form, yeah, yeah. In, in the systems we have been working with lately, to, to work with that distinction has been regarded as we haven't used it for a while. Maybe it becomes super relevant in the next system we were going into. We don't know. It's something new that came in. Came in uh, something new that just uh, starting to take to have traction. Yeah, we are looking for models all the time. So when we have a, see a model that uh, scores on all the criteria, both individual and collectively applicable, and all the other criteria that I mentioned, then we try it, and if it works, it will be a part of the plan. Well, or, we, or we are inventing them ourselves, and say that this way of looking at the world, sketching it like this icon, then it becomes something that is made to stick and we can start to use it. Well, you have been using this already for many years, so if you would compare your first list of means that you started with with your present list, would there be a lot of new ones, a lot of old ones that have disappeared? Yeah. Present and desired, there are the model present and desired, which is a generic model, it can be used along different timelines, different mm -hmm. aggregating levels and so on. It's definitely a classic. And then you have the ones that are in that uh, pan is the ones that are most at use right now. Uh, the changes depends on um, the practitioners uh, in the room as well. So uh, I might have two favorites that I very often use. And then you have another facilitator that has three other favorites that I never use. So it depends, as you were mentioning, on the person as well. Mm. Uh, there is one remark is. If we compare uh, means to genes, yes. genes have a fine structure. It, they are made of uh, uh, nucleic <coughs> acids. And when the genes are mutated, the mutation is actually changing some parts, sometimes single, sometimes two or more of the nucleic acids, so the gene itself changes its uh, identity. The memes that you are using are, in this sense, monolithic. They don't have a fine structure inside them. And therefore, if there is a kind of mutation, evolution, it will be on combinations of these memes and not in That's the right. memes themselves. Right. So what needs to be checked, if it's interesting in some manner, are units of meaning that combine different combination of memes that work better or worse for different organizations. Yes. And this is, again, very context dependent. What kind of combinations work is the specific yeah. system at the specific times. But as you were mentioning several times, what we are working with is, is goal-seeking uh, organizations that are really not focused on memes at all. They, they don't care about this perspective. They are just picking what's useful, yeah. what's beneficial, and they use it, and if it's working, the, the leadership, uh, with the training, feedback is good, and people saying, yes, this is fine, and we get return on investment, on the investment, then do it us, then they don't care about this perspective. So we are not communicating this too much on our website, for instance, we are doing facilitated uh, workshops, we use this material, but we're not marketing it as such. We are just doing it because it, uh, it creates consistency. In the <coughs> but uh, our clients, they are focused on reaching their goals, having a good time, being in a good state, at work, together. 
or your memes part of a school of thought which uses this, and by this I mean like you can have the archetypes of systems theory, yeah. you can take a number of archetypes, and once you know system theory, every archetype may take a while to understand it, but eventually you see it's just an analogy. Mm -hmm. Or are these your own memes? The, I have sketched out a lot of them. They are influenced by what I'm influenced by, which is evolution, complexity, and recognition. So they are, they are models that are kind of taking people into that way of thinking without being explicit on the theory. So it's, it's, uh, it's models that are more into the systems field, uh, kibernetic perspectives kind of, more that than other schools. Can I ask you, you mentioned that uh, you're only taking means that uh, work on both the social level and the individual level. Why? Well, that's just uh, the, if you look at following and leading. Yeah. Uh, I was mentioning, do you want to be a market leader or a market follower in, as a company? That's a collective thing. Or you can say, who do you lead at work informally or formally? And who follows you at work formally and informally? That is two applications. One is collective, first one. The other one is individual. Mm -hmm. Every model in that fan can be applied the same way. So. What we often see is that people say, like, wow, that's a cool model. That really sorts out stuff when it comes to a team I'm working with, let's say, to be a better leader or whatever. Um, and then they start, oh, you should do this as well. Look at this model. And they had a napkin and everything, and you had the spread. But also that we can use this on the collective system. So very often we see a diffusion from an individual application, which creates enthusiasm. And then suddenly, when the CEO has applied them individually, he said, well, can't we all apply these models in making sense of the world and achieving our goals? And then it becomes a program for the whole company, if you were to <coughs> one. So you can start with what is labeled coaching, and then you end up with the, the whole system, because there is an enthusiasm on the models on the individual. Okay, so it's to make uh, the the message easier to cross from the individual to the organization. Yeah, that could be. It's a, it's, a, it's a way of packaging content. So if you use this dimension of packaging yeah, I, it, it's... I was wondering, if you have a very nice uh, meme that represents an interaction between social systems, why not use it, even if it doesn't apply to individuals? Oh. But it's true that on that case, you don't have the benefit of maybe um, making the individual realize what it means or see it. No, I understand. So it's, let's take a Porter, Michael Porter, business uh, theorist. Uh, a lot of models, or Porter models, uh, can be applied on businesses. And they analyze and you can put in things into boxes and make things clear or less. But you can't do that on an individual level. It becomes absurd. So we have chosen to say our models, our memes, are models, memes that should be both individual and collectively applicable because of what I was mentioning. Well, that increases the diffusion. But if you have a port model with 16 variables, it's not made to stick. You can't, call it, you can't reproduce it because it's too complex. And that is true with a lot of sociology or social science models. They become too complex and too big. So it's better to have naive small stuff if they are as Lego bricks to make diffusion. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask? Yes, please. Do you participate or oversee all your projects at the company? I mean, personally. Personally. No. Like, there are projects which you kind of didn't really oh, yeah. know before before they I been, um, uh, ended. Yeah. I am not into, I am into a few projects, but there are a lot of projects going on which I'm not a part of. Okay. Especially lately, I haven't been. I've been focusing on writing, and I haven't uh, been working with clients for almost 10 months. So this would be a kind of a test, whether Definitely. this is a theory or whether it's about you yeah, as a person. Right. And if, if the company starts to do something else than you are sort of explaining here, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind very of a good point. So it's, it's exciting times when it comes to scaling this. I'm doing this with a few colleagues, um, and that is very exciting. How will this develop as a organism and as a formal structure when, uh, when we are growing. How is the diffusion of the system or the, the whole concept when it comes to... But now we are uh, six individuals, seven individuals, 
uh, to a very small unit. Uh, but we are going to be even more in different cities. Two in Singapore at the moment, and a small group of people in Oslo. <laughs> yeah. And it's been like this for a long time because we have been kind of like a study group, more or less. Yeah, we've done our turnover, we have done our business, but we have been working quite theoretically. And now it's conceptualized for scaling. It's exciting times. So. The first presentation here was on ontology and epistemology. That's right. Yeah. And the second one was what again? Governance. A governance. And now it's memes. Yeah. Well, and How do you put the three together in terms yeah. of the general concept? I, I, that's my that's my work. That's okay. what I'm writing on the com combination of, okay, of three. these three. So this is the kind of micro approach. This is, uh, but memetics has always been there. Uh, when I'm talking about governance, I'm talking about memetic governance. Um, I'm talking about epistemology and ontology. I'm talking about that applied to memetics as a, as a field, as a science. Okay. Weaknesses with memetics and you know, epistemology. Have you applied this to university? I haven't worked for a university. So have you applied this to university? I mean, to to a, to a department? To, to yeah, yeah. Department this is a. I'm, I, it's a part of an interdisciplinary study. So I, I am formally registered on uh, based on my papers or the, what the paper, but my intentions. So it's uh, it is. No, I mean, have you applied this in the real in the university to a group? To say, no. I mean, let's, how do we see each other? Are we leaders? Are we followers? What are we doing? How do we get our goals? What are our goals? What are our means? How do we do this? But this I mean. In yeah. the universe. In, a, in a knowledge system. Knowledge yeah, oh, yeah, knowledge system, definitely. In knowledge, in, knowledge, yeah, we have a lot of uh, different knowledge systems where there are people with a heavy background, uh, formally educational background, and that's what we've done for the last 10 years. And that is the, the 10 million euros that we're referring to is from this type of business. It's, it's mostly knowledge. Agents. We work with people with a strong competence in their field and a strong character, and people that all really know what they want to do together. So uh, together. They're they're together the together part is the difficult. Sorry. The together part. Yeah, yeah. It's the difficult part. It is. It is. <laughs> Can you say a few more words about the or what you just said before? Mimetic governance. Can you say a few more? Yeah, well, governance. Uh, there, there's a lot of governance theory. There are written several books in political science on governance. It's a, it's a buzzword as well. How do you run, run public organizations in a way so you develop services and stuff in the I suppose, most economic or best way? Some of this literature is quite formally oriented, focusing on formal hierarchies and so on. Uh, other parts of this literature is focused on networks and networks theory. When I, when I uh, talk about governance, I, I have defined it as steering and coordinations of social systems or organizations. Or, okay? mm -hmm. So it's coordination and steering, how do you do that? And I think public, as I mentioned, the word governance sclerosis, there's a lot of breakdown in a lot of systems because they are relying too much on the hierarchy way of running or governing uh, systems. This applies to public sectors specifically. So there are, but there are developments all around the world uh, where, where the network dimension and the network perspective on governance is more taken into account and you find a trade-off between the classical hierarchy way of doing it and the network way of doing it. So I think there are movements going on. In a memetic perspective, you can start to think that if you have public servants, or uh, you can work the same way, you work with the same method, uh, really go into a, a direct a DG here in Brussels, for instance, and, and work with the foreign the unit that works with foreign affairs, and see how do they look at themselves and the tasks at hand, and how do they work in that specific silo, in that DG. And you can start with the same thing, but then it's not commercial roles. When I was talking here, I was talking about commercial systems, but we have worked with official systems and, uh, as well, and then it's more about governance, more than making the strategy come true, which is more a commercial safety, maybe. It's, would it be correct to say that just, just um, following a certain set of association, that you make it a kind of psychological analysis to an organization. You just 
try to make the organization clear, to clarify an organization how it thinks about it itself, how it forms its uh, goals, desires, problems, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of a psychological analysis in an organization mm -hmm. like level. Yeah, that's a way to put it. Uh, but uh, because also when a person go to a psychoanalysis, mm -hmm. there is a language, a language game of terms, concepts that are used in order to make to give the person, the individual, the tools in order to understand himself better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a kind of it's, it's possible. It's an analogy. Uh, but what we do, we unleash stuff here that because we are external, because we are facilitators, we because we're coming from the outside, because we are never doing citations from the one to one conversations we are having in rooms, then we, we never do that. We we that's the frame. So when we talk to this person up here, that is the, the trust that is created in this room is quite important to get that authentic uh, version with the language that this person used. And then we do the same process with this person down here. And we have another story, and, but the same. And then we find similarities and differences when it comes to how they code their reality, how they use language. And we use that language in our statements here. So it's not about our facilitative, fancy, uh, complexity stuff coming in. It's about their language. It's about their talking about themselves. So in an epistemology ontology perspective, this is actually what's the epistemology of the system? How do they make sense together of the world, uh, of the ontology reality they have inside? And we are just putting up a mirror and systemize and make that systematic so they can understand each other better, to coordinate better, to move forward together. Uh, forward is where? That's, that's a movement story. That's a movement, the message is the leader. The media is the message, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, I struggle with Lumen. I think it's, um, I think it's, it's uh, going and not easy to understand. <laughs> yeah. You said move forward. So all this thing, it kind of re uh, reduces the friction within the system. Let's say increases the efficiency of the system to move somewhere to achieve the goal. But then, who or what sets the goal? If one guy thinks that. All the strategies are nonsense, and and the guy or the girl on top thinks that that's what we have to do. So, how the system decides? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. That is all very often the case. I mean, and then it's voice or exit, isn't it? I mean, yeah, either you stay in this company or you you find something else to do. Very often, most commercial companies have goals. Don't they? they are they are they are commercial or and also public companies have goals. Very often, goals that are changing into each other, but they there are goals. All, every system has a goal, as mentioned here. So, if this person thinks that what we are doing now, or what she is doing now, together with her people up here, and is wrong, ethically, or morally, or whatever, or they don't feel they belong, then they do exit. And it has actually sometimes happened that people have realized that, uh, that uh, this is not something I want to be a part of based on conversations that are taking place in our workshops. But then it's, then it's self-organization, isn't it? It's happening that the agent uh, act on his or her own behalf and do the stuff that is right for that person when it comes to being belonging and not belonging to, a, to an organization. So, but what you're addressing is a, it's a general thing, isn't it? About how do we act together in, in social system? When do we do this with success and when there is it a lot of friction and people walking in different directions. When is it flow and ease? And when is it difficulties and, and challenges? Very often we see also that friction is, uh, in social systems is, is important to, uh, to create movement, isn't it? To really have some authentic conversations going on, which can be regarded as fric friction stuff, but uh, which is quite important to move, to move forward. Yeah, it's an interesting uh it's an interesting because social systems, from a very basic definition, do not they have dynamics, but not necessarily distinct goals. When you go to an organization, it's a social system that has already defined goals. Right. So, in a manner of speaking, you must be 
in facilitating the organization, you have to be biased in relation to the goals that are expressed. Yeah, well, not biased. That's the, this is what we work for. We work for this organization to achieve their goals. Sorry. It's about coordination and mobilization in relation to that. So it's uh, that's yeah. what we have to remove bias here. You certainly don't have to be. Yeah, so. But that's exactly what I try to explain. That there are two different things: mm. a goal-oriented system and a social system are two different things. Yeah, okay. If you when I'm if you're saying that if you say formal, let's say if you say, if you say formal and goal directing, uh, directing and informal, not necessarily. This is not necessarily informal and not goal directing. Okay. Then you can say that over here it's possible to talk about social systems, but over here you need to talk about organizations. Is that uh, how I understand you? Formal and informal. Yes. I don't know what the difference is between formal and informal. Okay. Right? I mean, formal is structural. Formal. Oh, okay. Structural, structural and cultural. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. So if you do like this, maybe, and, and this, is just, this is just definition, isn't it? If you choose to say, I, I include organizations in my term social uh, systems, and it's more or less uh, structuralized or culturalized, then it's just a question of definition and how you use words, isn't it? So if you say that this has nothing to do with organization, and this has nothing to do with social system, this is just definitions of words. So how do you use expressions in, in talking about People who are together. I totally agree with you, but there is a that this is more natural over here, and maybe it's natural to talk about this here. But you can also say that all this is social systems, and some of them pursue goals, and some of them does the, not. The, 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 the separation line is explicit, implicit. Yeah, right. So it explicit, if formal is to explicit something, mm -hmm. then you make a theory out of it. Mm -hmm. it's Informal is implicit, and it's embedded, it's part of, but it's there. Ask an anthropologist, a social anthropologist about that. If you say that to him, he would say, no, that's not the truth. Cultural is also possible to make explicit and to... Of course, of course. Yeah. 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 Once you're explicit, yeah. you're stepping out of implicitly. Yeah? Right? You transcend your, your, your what is there unknowingly. I mean, I live unconsciously, I can still do my job very well. Mm. All of a sudden, they explain what I'm doing, I said, is this what I'm doing, right? Mm. So you, you formalize it. Okay. But the two are the same. Mm. Right? So it's mm. just a matter of where you look it from. I understand. How do you perceive it? Right? So you theorize, or you don't theorize. Mm. But I don't see it. Okay, uh, any more questions or comments or anything? Uh, well, I was looking through your means, and actually they're all kind of distinctions. They're all simple but general distinctions that have to do with systems and governance. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very simple distinctions, uh, leading versus following, mm -hmm. or positive versus negative. Others are a little bit more complicated in the sense that you have three or four options. Mm -hmm. But basically they're all ways of saying you can do this or you can do that. And there is some kind of a variable or some kind of a distinction that you should take into account. So, I, I think your memes are, in, in a sense, even simpler than what I would call memes. They're really distinctions and kind of building blocks of memes. And I think that to, to talk what is a meme, which is, uh, that is, uh, I, I said in one of my former um, speeches or uh, lectures that to create discrete units on analysis is very important when we talk about memes, and I know we have talked about this before. So, to really define what the meme is, and uh, it's important to be able to study it. And I think there's a lot of memetics and uh, that doesn't highlight that too much. They talk about everything is memes, and the world is full of memes, and they are spreading around. But to really find them, in the diffusion, right? then you have to define what you're looking for. You have to make them discrete and establish them as units of analysis. If not, no, there is no reason. Now I also understand like what uh, we have said about that the memes don't have internal structure, unlike genes. That's why they can't really evolve. 
but they can very easily combine just because they are simple. That's true. Just because they're simple building blocks. That's true. So calling them memes, I think it's it's too general. You should find a more specific term because these are not for me a meme typically is a kind of a story in which a number of elements are connected together while these are just elements. Mm. The connections have to be made by the people in their context. And, and again, it's a, it's a question of wording, isn't it? I mean, how do you define stuff and uh, what do you include and what do you exclude in, when you're using different terms? So, but it's a very interesting point. And yeah, uh, well, I really don't know about memes, but maybe it's the icon that is on the meme, but there is evolution. Uh, things that, uh, for example, look at the phone, the icon of the phone. Uh, changes mm -hmm. and in a few years, you know, you put the disk, you know, the, nobody will know what it means. So, the same, this is just a, a pictographic representation of a concept in your mind, and it has an evolution. The pictogram, maybe, but I think that the pictogram here is not as important as the concept. If I look yeah, at the I'm pretty sure that even the concept may have evolution, things that you, you uh, took. Uh, uh, you didn't think there was an implication from here to there, you know? After uh, a while, it comes naturally. And things that, for example, if you have something, you wanted it uh, on, on your mobile, an application, and before that, it was only on, on your PC. So I think even the concepts may have an evolution. But that's why looking at those 100 and something that you had before and what are the ones that are not used anymore, yes. Each practitioner has its preferences, but which ones are the ones that are not really representing anything to anybody? That's anymore? right. It and would be interesting to see which ones of the early ones really are yeah. not used anymore. Exactly. That would be interesting to see. And also activities. You know the rectangle uh, thing. Then you have program, theme, me, and activities. I mean, you have a lot of activities that highlights, so it can be, the icon can be quite abstract, but when you start to do different activities related to it, and you facilitate it, then it becomes more and more, uh, it makes more and more sense. It uh, started out quite abstract, the theoretical, and ended up as something very applicable in each agent's life. So what interests me most is that you know, I have this year of distinction dynamics that the most important thing that's lacking in traditional scientific models is the ability to create new distinctions. You start with a model and you assume that distinctions are given, that they're objectively there, that there is uh, horizontal direction, there's vertical direction, there is space and there is time and there is miles, and these things are given. Well, what typically happens in, in complex systems is that it's not a question of knowing all the variables that are there. There are too many of them. It's important to know which are the variables that may be useful for me to understand the thing. And these are simple but very general distinctions that are typically useful in complex systems and particularly in social systems. And that is probably why they are useful because people, as you said, they lose the overview of the system because so many things are happening. So they have to start making distinctions, and they use the distinctions that everybody in their company uses, which may be appropriate, which may be less appropriate, but injecting some new ones, suddenly things become visible that before were not visible, and become discussable, and become applicable, and become uh, heuristic uh, aids to, to solve problems. It's what you are doing is you're injecting new distinctions. Yeah, I, I agree with you. So, so yeah. I think that is, I think that is the, the, the core of why it works. Mm -hmm. Because people don't see the forest through the trees anymore. They need to make high-level distinctions. They have a few that they use because they have always used them that may or may not be appropriate. And if then you throw in some new ones, new ones of which from experience you know that they are applicable in lots of different cases, the probability is high that some of those tumors will be applicable to this particular case, and the moment they start applying them, and if they are really new, lots of things suddenly become clear that before were not. You had this mean process action. Action is actually the black box, because you reconstruct it from the bottom up. You come up to your memes. But that means it's purely theoretical construction then. And you have to, from there, go down to the bottom, it says, well, that's what I've been doing all my life, right? Is that what you call it? No. So, 
these two, and, and the, 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 the sign that you use or the symbol that you use for that is almost irrelevant. It's in your knowledge that you have to apply that example of, of, of practical instance. Right? You can't do that in, in abstraction. You have to take practical instance. And when you say activities is black box, uh, when we are in a room, we introduce different activities, following and leading, a lot of following and leading, kind of from impro theater, just to manifest this. Um, and uh, the black box part uh, is, yeah, it's a perspective, but I mean, it's quite explicit what's happening. They are leading and following each other physically in a room to make that specific icon come alive as a form, as a theory, as a sign. And then they start to apply it on themselves and the context they are operating in. So we use activities and exercises just to manifest stuff and to make them come, become alive. So not sitting in a classroom studying a fan. There's a lot of dynamics going on in the room because of the activities. 70% of our deliveries are activities. A lot of dialogues, a lot of exercises on each meme and memes in combination. But, but the follow and lead is a good example of what I would call injection of a new distinction. Everybody will know the distinction between boss and subordinate. Mm -hmm. All companies are organized according to that scheme. Mm -hmm. But follow and lead is related but not the same. It's a different dimension. It's you can be a boss and actually follow the guy who is below you because he always understands True. better what's going on. Definitely. And by injecting this alternative distinction rather than the distinction boss subordinate follow leader, you suddenly make people aware of a whole dynamics in the system that before they might not have seen because they didn't have the, the concepts to express it. That's exactly right. Yeah. Boss subordinate is a physical relation, right? That's a boss, that's a subordinate. But lead follow is a mental relation. You have to have to go abstract from this tool. There's nothing to do with boss and with and with, uh, with, with, with subordinate. It's follow lead. All of a sudden, you get the insight right right out of this follow lead. You come to that's dialectics actually. You come yeah. to a new insight. And we do exercises where you have one person and another person. This is uh, showing on the TED video when I make make people actually lead and follow. So who's leading and who's following from the outside? It's impossible to see. But from the inside, the players, they know who is leading and following. And then you have a paradox when the follower leads and the leader follows. Because that happens when you start to do this simultaneously. This is Tai Chi, isn't it? I mean, yeah. uh, so it's, it's like, and it's a strong manifestation in a very simple activity related to the icon. So we have approximately 500 exercises that are like this. They are not too theoretical. Written or to they are too much not too much into impro theater not too much because that will be appropriate in some contexts but some of them are quite funny and it creates a lot of energy to just do them and it's a kind of um, manifestation of quite abstract stuff through exercises and and, uh, and plays theater games of course I that that applies to abstract yourself from it huh? yeah take it down take right. it into reality. Uh, uh, experience it, and then you can start to work That's on where it. That's where the bind rationality comes in, because then you unbound your rationality, actually. It will yes, happen. you can say that. Yes. Okay, 15.47, 3.47 is now, almost two hours. Thank you for listening, and thank you for the questions. Uh, really useful for me. I will go back home and uh, look at the video and see <laughs> what has been said and, uh, and, uh, and take that into account for my you don't, you don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember it now, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's, all, it's all there, I understand. So I look forward to looking at the video. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.